What are the quickest and easiest ways to incorporate best practices? Stick around and we'll explore it. Hello, everybody. Jeff Mason, Simple Biz 360 podcast, simplebiz360.com. Coming to you from Half Coast Studios, St. Louis, Missouri. Matt Parker behind the boards. Man, we're having uh, having some fun here today. And uh, thanks for joining along if you want to subscribe. And you've never done that. We love it. Uh, if you go into your lower right-hand portion of the screen, if you're uh, watching this visually, you'll see a little uh, pinwheel there. Just hover your cursor over it. That'll take you to subscriptions on YouTube. We're also on IGTV. Also on Gab TV, and uh, sometimes the episode links and content can't make those for some reason, but you know what? YouTube, it's always there. And then we're on 28 listening platforms, so we'd love you to, to join along. But today we're going to be talking about uh, the art of replication and duplication. Kind of think uh, R&D, right? It's replication and duplication. So if you take a look, let's just park for a second uh, in one of my careers in the fashion apparel business. Um, if you look at that business, it's really almost all, it stems from replication and duplication. What do I mean by that? Uh, just to give you an example, in my life, you know, I used to do all this European shopping. So twice a year, I was sent out to London, Amsterdam, Paris to go shop the young men's stores, Montreal, twice a year to go shop. We constantly had to shop the malls and be up on who was doing what, Abercrombie and Fitch and all these stores, right? So we were constantly had our finger on the pulse of features, fabrics, fabric finishing. When we, we when we used to travel and go to uh, overseas to shop, we, we'd get all these things, we'd buy them so that we could incorporate these features and fabric finishes, and then we go to Hong Kong, and we'd uh, sit there and we'd try to reverse engineer the fabric with the Hong Kong trading companies and the fabric companies, and figure this out. And then we tried to bring these concepts to the mainstream market here in uh, the United States, and in particularly, we would share this with Pennies and Sears and Coles and the Buckle and Target. And, you know, on down the line, casual, mail, big and tall, and you name all these different stores. Uh, and we would sit there and work with the buying staffs and try to uh, parlay this information over to them. So when you looked at this whole ball of wax, it was all built on replicating what you found in your research and then duplicating that or, you know, duplicating a portion of that. So why is this so important? Because it is truly the quickest and easiest way for you as a solopreneur, you as an entrepreneur, a mompreneur, somebody who has not been exposed to a lot of uh, best practice training, you haven't been part of a Fortune 500 company, you haven't been in that big corporate uh, machine that has 40 hours a year of continuing education and plopping you in these classes to teach you some of these things. You don't have a litany of mentors that have gone before you that are transferring this information down to you. So you're, you're kind of, you know, you're, you're left to your own devices and your own research. And so this is a fantastic way. And I hope this show really helps you because it's a, it's really a neat way to look at some things and model success with an effective approach to research and development, or as we call it, replication and duplication. So really, when you think about it, um, be observant, right? So as you're going about your day, especially if you're an entrepreneur, start really listening to what's happening to you in uh, coffee shop lines, in restaurants, in big box stores, um, on during an online transaction chat session. Um, start really talking to other people, listening to other, taking mental notes from other people that you're uh, talking with about business and about business experiences, other neighbors, friends at, at church, at, at your barbecues. You know, what are these people going through in terms of issues and and um, you know processes when they're involved what's what sounds good what sounds bad then you know we've never had any platform like we have today to be able to go out and freely research if you heard about this company who did x y and z tremendously well well guess what you could go to their website you could start fishing around you could start looking and you could start seeing 
all these things. And don't look for specifics necessarily, I don't think, but look for concepts. Look for commonality, some common roads that you can take your company goods and services down that parallel what these other companies have done. You know, R&D is not plagiarizing. That's not what we're advocating here. We're advocating just to be able to model after some of these things that you see. And, it, and it's really, you know, modeling proven concepts uh, from a variety of companies in different industries. So R&D really is just mimicking format, systems, color, packaging, layout, messaging, fonts, presentation, arrangement, procedures. You know, and th this list can go on and on, but, but think about, you know, those kind of... Um, Think about those kind of concepts as you engage in business. And I think one of the neatest things I've learned over the, you know, I, it, I, I've said this before in other podcasts that, you know, it took me 30 years to write this book. I would planned it in 1989 and it, and it uh, published in, in 2019, self-published in 2019. So, you know, I worked at it for 30 years. But the, the coolest part of that 30-year process was this situational observation, the opening my ears up, hearing, listening, seeing, measuring, trying, writing down, looking at, you know, just so many different things. It was just a fun exercise that every situation I was in became this creative experience, this exercise in, hey, what's going on here? What's right? What's wrong? What can be done different? So I, I think this is really a great opportunity to look for best practices, model them, and then how do you deploy them? You just take the concept and you inlay it in your uh, business or you overlay it in your business and you just let your ingredients, your componentry fill in the gaps and, and whatever goods or services you're involved in, you know, you can just substitute those for what was in the, uh, in the, you know, the model that you're selecting um, as a good model. So I, I just say have a lot of fun with this, guys. It's a great, you know, summertime's uh, upon us here. It's just a fun time to start this process. You can start anytime you want, and it can really be fun. You can get your family involved on it. You can get relatives involved. Hey, be on the lookout. Grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, you know, just it just, just can be a fun, fun uh, thing that you can go about doing. So uh, with that said, you know, every week we do this cool, lost in the shuffle, bury a buried rock and roll track that's just been, you know, it's been out there for a while. Maybe people forgot about it. It might be 40, 50, you know, 50 years old. And uh, today we've got one that I really think is cool because it has replication and duplication um, uh, kind of uh, br bred into it, if you will. And I'm going to talk about a band that came out of Long Island, uh, New York. And in fact, Richie Blackmore and John Lord of Deep Purple actually said they wanted to mimic this band, I'm paraphrasing, but they wanted to replicate the sound and the feel of this band. And in fact, this band um, actually, when Led Zeppelin toured in the United States for the first time, Led Zeppelin opened for these guys. I mean, that's how incredible this is. And, uh, you know, this band, they were fans of the Beatles. They just loved the Beatles. And, uh, you know, who didn't back in the late 60s? Uh, but uh, these guys uh, were known as Vanilla Fudge. And when you think of them, they had... Um, some tremendous, tremendous artists. Uh, Tim Bogert, Carmen Apice, which is just a phenomenal, one of the best drummers of all time, in my opinion. Mark Stein and Vince Martell. And these, t these guys from Long Island put together this band. I forget what they did, three or four albums. But, um, you know, they combined this psychedelic Baruch uh, type of an organ sound. It was really a really cool sound for the time. And, you know, the energetic drumming of, uh, of, of Mr. Bogert and they just, uh, or Apice, they just went nuts. So it was really a fun time. And then and uh, he had actually spawned one of the first really cool super groups that came out of the U.S., and that was Beck, Bogert, and Apice. That was Jeff Beck, um, Tim Bogert uh, from uh, the Vanilla Fudge Band, and uh, Carmen Apice. And it was really what a cool album. We actually featured uh, Stevie Wonder's Superstition on that one time. So we hope you like this tune. You keep me hanging on. 1967 Vanilla Fudge. We will see you in 168 hours. And don't forget, we always say, right, if you want to improve the how uh, you do business, you, or you want to prove the results of your business, improve the how. That's the connectivity these days to getting that better result. It's that customer experience, right? 
be a, be a keyboard digger, man. There's so much information out there you don't need. I, I, I assure you, you do not need TV and cable news to feed you in a mummified way the news. Now, there's plenty of ways you can go out there and find it yourself. We encourage you to do it. We need truth tellers, just like on that computer back in front there. We need truth tellers coming up the pipeline for the future. We're tired of lies. We're tired of politicians and all these people on mainstream media that lie. So we want truth. So guys, we invite you to do it. Pick up the Bible, read the stories. Unbelievable, unbelievable stories in the Bible. Just great um, tales and they're true and it's just, it's phenomenal. You can't make it up. And uh, we just invite you to pray. And again, uh, we just love the fact that you're with us today and we'll see you in one week, which is 168 hours. Take care.